Hi, my name is Mikko Suvanto, and this is the Mosomic MEMS microphone guide. In this episode I continue talking about MEMS microphone reliability. This one is about reliability improvement. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. In the previous episode I went through many of the hazards that microphones face in production and in devices. In this one we'll have a look at some ways to improve microphone reliability. First of all, the reliability of a microphone or a microphone system in a device can be improved with proper implementation of the microphone into the device it's used in. This means designing the device so that the protection it offers to the microphone is maximized. Protection from impacts and other mechanical hazards can be achieved by designing the device mechanics around the microphone so that impacts or forces applied to the outside of the device aren't conveyed by the device mechanics to the microphone. Better protection can be achieved with rigid mechanical structures around the microphone, with a well-supported device circuit board, with buffer zones around the microphones to prevent contact to adjacent components and by designing the device mechanics so that pressure applied to the device does not get coupled to the microphone. Contamination immunity can be improved with dust meshes or waterproof membranes that protect the microphone either from solid contamination or from both solid contamination and liquids. The drawback is that meshes and membranes usually affect the performances of the microphone systems for example, by increasing self-noise levels or by changing the shapes of frequency responses. I talked about implementation and protecting the microphone in detail in episode 16. The protection the device can offer the microphone is often not adequate, so the robustness and reliability of the microphone itself is also important. Robustness against reasonable mechanical shocks and abuse is a key reliability factor for a MEMS microphone that affects both the production of the device as well as the lifetime reliability of the microphone in the device in the hands of the customer who bought the device. The shocks and abuse a microphone can face may be, for example, handling, nudges, pokes, hits, violent acceleration, deformations, vibration, and so on. There are many factors that affect the mechanical reliability of a MEMS sensor. For example, the material thicknesses and material properties, such as the compositions of semiconductor materials used in the sensor, for example, the dopants used to dope the silicon, as well as the doping level. Also, the designs and layouts of the membrane and the backplate are key factors. Risks can be mitigated also with damage prevention features, such as over travel stops that prevent excessive displacement of the moving sensor element from its resting position. The package must be designed to give the MEMS sensor, the ASIC and the electrical connections in the microphone as much protection as possible from handling and abuse. It must shield them from direct mechanical contact and hits. It must also be sturdy enough to provide the chips a rigid environment in which the propagation of reasonable deformations and other forces applied onto the package by the device circuit board and other mechanics is minimized. This minimizes the stresses on the MEMS sensor or the solder joints inside and outside the microphone. The top of the microphone, especially in the case of a top board component, must be so solid that it doesn't get deformed under normal conditions. The adhesion of the different parts of the microphone to each other must be strong and reliable. Typical methods of attaching different parts together are adhesives, epoxy and solder. In some cases both may be used simultaneously. The parts to be adhered together are, for example, the lid, the substrate and the walls of the package. It's also important that standard manufacturing and servicing procedures such as manual or automated pick-and-place of the component onto the circuit board, 
as well as reflow and reworking don't pose significant risks to the package. The microphone must be compatible with standard processes with adequate safety margins. I'll talk more about reliability and production in the next episode. Mechanical abuse of the MEMS sensor can also be caused by pressure shocks. Like I explained in episode 22, pressure shocks can be caused by factors such as ESD, as well as dropping the device onto the floor. There are ways to improve the microphone's chances of surviving pressure shocks without short or long-term damage. Naturally, the MEM sensor structure must be inherently robust. The same rules apply as for mechanical shocks I talked about a minute ago. The right materials and material thicknesses, proper designs and layouts of the sensor structures, and so on. Also in this case, over-travel stops can be added to the sensor design to prevent excessive displacement. Good grounding and protection built into the ASIC, for example ESD diodes, help in the case of an ESD shock. Another important reliability improvement area is immunity against contamination, such as particles and liquids. Like I said in episode 22, particles can originate in both the microphone itself or they can find their way into the microphone through the sound channel in the device and the sound port on the microphone package. These can be referred to as internal and external contamination, and the microphone and the sensor in it should be inherently as immune as possible to both. There are at least two key ways to make a MEMS microphone sensor immune to contamination. First, prevent contamination ingress to structures that are susceptible to contamination. Second, eliminate structures that are susceptible to contamination. If either of these is done successfully, the contamination immunity of the microphone should be good. The latter is the better option, because it reduces or eliminates the need for very high cleanliness of the production facilities and materials, thereby reducing the cost to mass manufacture the microphones. If, by design, there's no place where contamination can cause problems, the inherent immunity of the sensor is maximized. Typical risky places in terms of contamination in a microphone sensor are structures that are very close to each other and that move in relation to each other. In this context, close can mean dimensions as small as a few micrometers. A particle can get in between the structures and cause problems. Another risk is a structure where two parts of the electrical circuit in the sensor are close to each other and a particle, especially a wet one, can cause electrical changes by being in touch with the two electrical nodes. In the case where risky places have been eliminated, there's no need to design and optimize structures into the MEMS sensor itself or into the microphone package to block contamination from certain parts of the sensor. If the contamination immunity of the microphone depends on preventing contamination ingress to the sensitive structures, there will always be a risk of the protection failing and contamination causing problems. If there are contamination susceptible structures in the MEMS sensor, the key contamination mitigation method is to prevent the propagation of the contamination to those sensitive structures. To prevent problems caused by internal particles, the microphone manufacturer must avoid built-in contamination. This refers to contamination that's inside the microphone already when it leaves the microphone manufacturing line. In practice, this means having a clean microphone production flow from the manufacturing of the semiconductor chips to the transportation of the bare chips to the assembly line of the microphone package and to the testing of the finished microphones. Semiconductor manufacturing processes are executed in clean rooms with very high cleanliness requirements. This means that the amount and size of particles hovering in the air in the production facilities is strictly controlled with the help of, for example, air filtration systems and controlled personal entry and exit procedures. Also, the microphone package assemblies are typically done in clean rooms, but the cleanliness requirements in those rooms are typically not quite as stringent as for the facilities used for semiconductor manufacturing. Another important thing in preventing internal particles 
is to choose the materials and material processing methods so that the particles don't get released to the insides of the microphone. The risk is that particles could come loose from the materials after the microphone leaves the microphone manufacturing line. It can happen that particles come loose from a material that is brittle or crumbly or granular and possibly finished in a way that makes it more likely to crumble. The coming loose of particles can be induced by, for example, mechanical impacts or vibrations as well as aging. To prevent external contamination from reaching the sensitive structures of the MEMS sensor, the whole sensor structure must be designed so that the propagation of contamination is minimized. In capacitive microphones, the membrane backplate gap can be vulnerable to contamination. A particle in the gap can affect the movement of the membrane and thereby affect the sensitivity, frequency response and noise level of the microphone. A particle in the gap can also cause electrical problems or reduce the reliability of the sensor, for example, during mechanical impacts to the device and the microphone. Any perforations and other passages through which contamination could pass to the gap should be eliminated or designed so that the probability of particle ingress is minimized. In capacitive microphones, these passages are, for example, the perforations in the back plate, as well as the vent hole through the membrane designed to allow pressure to equalize between the two sides of the membrane. The perforations in the back plate may be relatively big. This may enable particles to pass through and end up between the back plate and the membrane. The membrane, on the other hand, is not perforated, except for the small pressure vent opening, and it's thereby much less likely to let particles pass through. That's why the membrane, rather than the back plate, should face the sound port on the microphone package, through which contamination can find its way into the microphone. The springs can be the weak points in the system, in sensors where the moving parts are spring-mounted. For example, in some capacitive microphones the membrane is spring-mounted. Particles may pass through the springs and get between the membrane and the backplate, or the particles can get stuck in the springs, preventing their normal movement as the membrane vibrates back and forth, thereby changing the characteristics of the sensor. In some cases, capacitive sound sensors can be sandwich structures, meaning that there are two backplates on both sides of the membrane, or two membranes on both sides of a so-called backplate. These kinds of structures can have their own pros and cons when it comes to contamination immunity. There are other acoustic sensor types, for example piezoelectric sensors, the structures of which may be less susceptible to contamination. A key factor may be, for example, the lack of a membrane backplate pair, meaning that one of the main potential contamination traps has been eliminated. However, because of the need to acoustically isolate the front and back sides of the sensor, it may be difficult to avoid having some sorts of moving structures close to each other in most acoustic MEM sensor designs. It must be analyzed case by case whether the structures cause a risk or not. The moving structures in a MEMS microphone should be designed so that the probability of a particle that finds its way into the structures getting trapped there is minimized. The exact details of how this can be accomplished naturally depend on the structures of the moving parts in relation to each other. If possible, places where particles can get trapped into should be eliminated completely. The robustness of the microphone sensor should be optimized also against liquid contamination. Places such as gaps or slits between moving structures in which liquid contamination could cause problems should be eliminated if possible. Possible problems are stiction, changes in structure movement or other such problems. Phenomena such as capillary attraction and surface tensions of liquids can play significant roles in liquid contamination optimizations of MEMS structures. One possible solution is to design structures or protection systems, such as liquid-proof membranes, into the microphone that prevent liquid from reaching the sensitive parts. Liquids, as well as particles, especially wet ones, 
can cause also electrical problems in a microphone sensor system by changing the electrical properties between different parts of the electrical circuitry in the microphone. For example, in some microphones, the electrical impedance between some parts of the circuitry has to be extremely high in order for the system to work well. Contamination that touches two different circuit nodes may lower the impedance and thereby cause significant system performance reduction. Now that microphones are being put into more and more devices, there are also new requirements for what the microphones should endure. Microphones may be exposed to cooking fumes, grease, garage chemicals, hairsprays and so on. The stickier the contaminant, the more difficult it is to handle for delicate structures where parts move in relation to each other in very close proximity to other structures. The contamination may even cake on the micromechanical structures when it dries, making the problem even worse. The larger the dimensions of the moving parts are, the bigger the distance from one moving part to another, and the simpler the structures are, the better chances the sensor has to tolerate contamination without changes in acoustical properties or reliability. Another factor is that the heavier the member is that receives sound, the less it will be affected by the weight added by sticky contamination on it. However, the normal acoustic properties of a heavier acoustic receptor may be compromised. Of course, a lot of this is just educated guessing and speculation. The real-life contamination immunity of a MEMS microphone can only be verified by testing. The contamination immunity of the system can also be improved by building dust meshes or liquid-proof membranes into the sound channel of the device. However, a mesh or a membrane built into the microphone package is more effective because it protects the microphone immediately after it has been assembled on the microphone manufacturing line. If the membrane is in the sound channel of the device, the microphone will be unprotected until the device has been assembled. A challenge is that including a protective mesh or membrane into the microphone package may be difficult to accomplish in a small and cost-effective manner. Another significant factor is that a protective membrane has an effect on the sensitivity and thereby SNR of a microphone. The reduction can easily be 1 to 2 decibels. A membrane built into a MEMS microphone package is likely significantly smaller in size than a membrane in the device sound channel due to the size constraints set by the package. This makes the performance loss caused by a membrane built into the package bigger. Immunity to environmental factors such as heat, moisture and humidity is another key MEMS microphone reliability factor. The immunity of a MEMS microphone to variations in temperature, humidity and moisture both instantaneously and in the long term depends on many factors. The structures of the micromechanical system may change their electrical or mechanical properties in ways that affect the performance and or reliability of the microphone. Typically, semiconductor materials are stable, but it's possible that their properties, especially in the MEMS chip, can drift either temporarily or permanently due to changing temperature and humidity levels. The dopants used to dope the silicon, as well as the doping level, can affect the properties of semiconductor structures. Also, the electrical connections in the microphone, especially within the MEMS chip, as well as between the MEMS and the ASIC, and from the ASIC to the outside world, can be affected by humidity and moisture. The overall electrical design of the electroacoustic system inside the microphone is a key factor in how moisture affects both the reliability of the system and the amount of electroacoustic disturbances that the environmental conditions may cause. The more stringent the requirements for the electrical properties of the different parts of the MEMS ASIC system in the microphone are, the more susceptible the system is likely to be to changes caused by factors such as humidity. A common requirement in MEMS sensor systems is a need to have a very high impedance between some of the nodes in the electrical circuitry. Not meeting those requirements may compromise proper operation of the system. 
Changing environmental conditions can also affect the long-term reliability of a MEMS microphone. For example, the structural integrity of materials may be compromised. Sometimes designing a microphone to be inherently reliable and robust is not successful, and the result may be that the microphone system in a device has compromised reliability and performance. In this case, further measures must be taken to protect the sensitive parts of the system. A key thing is to prevent the exposure of the sensitive parts of the ASIC and the MEMS to humidity. Also, the electrical connections between the MEMS and the ASIC may have to be protected. The methods used to protect the MEMS and or the ASIC include glob top, especially on the ASIC, and protective coatings that can be used also on the moving electromechanical parts of the MEMS. The coatings can be, for example, hydrophobic. Even though there's a sound port on the microphone package and a sound channel in the device mechanics that expose the microphone to ambient conditions, the package and the device still provide a certain level of protection from environmental factors for the microphone sensor system. The MEMS sensor, the ASIC and the electrical connections between them. For example, changes in ambient conditions, such as temperature and humidity, happen at a slower pace inside the device and in the microphone package than in the outside air. This can, for example, reduce the amount of condensation on the sensitive parts of the microphone. Condensation can occur when the ambient temperature rises quickly. This can happen, for example, if a device is taken from a cold environment, where it's had time to cool down to the cold temperature, to a warmer environment. One scenario in which this can occur is when a device is taken in a tropical location from an air-conditioned building out to the warm and humid outside air. The device body and the microphone package also reduce the amount of contamination that can find its way onto the MEMS sensor, as compared to the case in which the MEMS sensor would be directly exposed to ambient factors. Maximizing the inherent immunities of the micromechanical system and the electrical system in the microphone to changes caused by environmental factors helps the whole system achieve the best possible performance and reliability. An inherently immune system is always safer than a system that relies on coatings or other protection methods to function as planned. With external protection, there's always a risk of failure, either due to manufacturing inaccuracies or environmental factors during the use of the device. Another factor that can disturb a microphone is light. This is caused by the fact that some parts of MEMS microphone systems can be sensitive to light. Light doesn't cause the microphone to fail permanently, but in certain conditions and cases it can lead to significant disturbances, such as buzzing in the presence of flickering lights, for example fluorescent tubes. There have even been cases where researchers have been able to feed data into a MEMS microphone with modulated lasers, enabling the input of commands into a speech-controlled device. This can, naturally, be a security risk if, for example, the microphone is an input device in a security-sensitive system, such as a home. Light sensitivity can be caused by, for example, susceptibility of semiconductor devices to light, combined with extremely high impedances between different parts of the electrical circuitry in the MEMS and ASIC chips. If light sensitivity cannot be avoided by optimizing the design of the electrical system or the mechanical structures of the MEMS and the ASIC, the microphone package must be designed to prevent light from reaching the sensitive parts. Glob top on top of the ASIC is one method commonly used to reduce light sensitivity. In some cases, light exposure can be reduced by placing the ASIC and MEMS in the microphone package so that light can't reach them. There are sophisticated tests designed for light sensitivity measurements, but a simple, quick and dirty test is to put the microphone under a fluorescent light and listen for disturbances in the output. Okay, that's it for this episode. 
In episode 24, I'll talk about MEMS microphone reliability in device production. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers. If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you like what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 